Hi, hi, hello. Hi, are we all back in full? Did you have a nice food? Yeah. Dessert? No. no. You should try it. You should try it. It's, it's delicious. Uh, so session 11. Uh, yes, we are uh, approaching the end of this lab. And right now we will be focusing on running an inclusive and diverse venue. Uh, also televised. Uh, and let me introduce uh, Sarah with her presentation regarding inclusive cinema a step further. Big applause for Sarah, please. <laughs> Seven minutes. Oh, a challenge. So hello to everybody here and everybody on the streaming, yeah. I'm just here actually to introduce Orlando and Thomas later. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, inclusive cinema and I'm gonna, of course, focus on uh, Kino Dvor, which is based in Ljubljana, Slovenia. And uh, I wanted to point it out two uh, dimensions of uh, inc uh, inclusiveness that we are thinking in uh, Kino Dvor. Uh, we are uh, really um, taking care and uh, trying to get uh, uh, in touch and working with them with all of the generations from children, youth to seniors. Uh, we are LGBT friendly venue. Uh, we work and we, uh, we are inclusive also uh, people with uh, disabilities and we are taking care also about the financial. Financial accessibility, for example, uh, homeless people uh, can get tickets for free at our cinema. And also the other thing is like physical, uh, um, uh, um, uh, physical, uh, ob uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, so we, we are actually trying now to work uh, for with the programs for deaf and hard of hearing, blind and visually impaired, and we also uh, have our, um, we work and we welcome people uh, which are wheelchair users. Uh, I'm gonna stop a bit at the LGBT community because uh, we got this certificate uh, 2015 from the city of Ljubljana and uh, we host the oldest uh, LGBT film festival in Europe. It will be 40 years uh, this year and still uh, facing uh, all of this awareness about uh, uh, you know inclusiveness we are facing uh, hate incidents also in our cinema just in october happened that the flag that was hanging uh, on uh, above our entrance door a uh, group of teenagers burned the flag uh, so yeah it was an awful experience uh, especially for the people who were at the cinema at the time and uh, uh, this flag is now at the Museum in Ljubljana and it will be a reminder of a uh, current uh, time that we are facing. So um, what are we working with? Uh, I'm like, there is a lot of things to say about all of the programs that we do at Kinodwar, but I have to be brief and I will just mention them. We do a program for first time, uh, for, for first timers. These are children from uh, two years and above. Then we have like special, uh, special uh, uh, program for Kino Trip. This is uh, for 15 plus. It's, it's something similar that uh, Ola was talking about with their then, uh, ambassadors. And we have like festival, we have club. Then we work uh, with uh, parents uh, who have babies there. Um, like once, one Wednesday per month, we have a special screening for parents, uh, parents with babies. Uh, the lights are not out, they're a little bit dimmed, the, the sound is a bit uh, lower and they can change the diapers in the cinema, they can walk around the hall uh, during the screening. Uh, and also we have uh, for seniors special uh, program when we have like this uh, free coffee and tea before the screening and after the screening there is a, uh, there is a discussion and it's curated of course. And we have Film in Hospital, which is an online platform for children and uh, teenagers who are um, <laughs> unfortunately spending time uh, in the hospital. Uh, so we just started last week with a pilot project uh, for the events for deaf and hard of hearing. 
Uh, here are the activities that we are going to do uh, from March to October. October, we plan 10 events. There will be mostly Slovenian films subtitled for uh, the deaf and hard of hearing. Uh, we already use the application, uh, which is uh, you know generating subtitles uh, for the discussion. We had the interpreter uh, of sign language at the event, and this will be events for adults and children. We are working this uh, uh, with Ministry of Culture, which is uh, also co-financing co co the program, and we are like closely working with the Association of Deaf and Hard of Hearing Clubs because for us it's very important that we communicate with the public that we want to work with and that we are uh, working for. Uh, it's not for us to decide what they need, but we have to be in close uh, uh, contact to know what their needs are and what they want. So we w w would like to provide them that. And also, uh, uh, we, we are thinking that these are uh, these events are not just for them. Also, with people who have ADHD, we had they have like some of them. They have like hard time to focus, and they need subtitles uh, for seniors, for anyone who's interested. And we are work working closely also with the film festivals and national radio and television, because uh, we want to do some events together, which are also for. Uh, 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 deaf and hard of hearing and also plans for the future we want to do the same kind of col collaborations for the uh, visually uh, impaired and blind people. We, I know that we are like very, very far away from some of you who are already doing this but in Slovenia where we are just starting this now and uh, <coughs> we want to include, uh, include also, of course, blind and visually impaired people also in our cinema. So we, we, will, we are now starting to do that. Uh, probably in October, we will have like the first uh, children's uh, film that is gonna be audio descriptive. And uh, I'm very happy about this because I'm also uh, specialized for doing the audio des description. So uh, this will be, uh, be also for me a special project. And we want to become also dementia friendly point so that we get the certificate for it and that somebody of our employees will get a training. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, and um, I appreciate your attention. <laughs> Yes, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm interested to hear, uh, do you have like uh, nationally uh, uh, films uh, uh, prepared for this audio? Uh, Audio or description. Uh, audio description. Yeah, yes. actually, I'm working uh, for the national television exactly uh, as a freelancer uh, as well, and I'm doing the audio description for uh, the national television already. So there is, but not everything. There are like selected uh, yes. uh, content that there are like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, audio because descriptive. I, I, uh, I guess that this is one thing that differs very much between our countries. One more question, and then. Can you tell us more about uh, Film in Hospital? It's an interesting project and I, how can you create film? <laughs> yeah, I know that this is a collaboration with some partners uh, from Croatia and maybe somebody else, I don't remember because I'm not the charge in of this program. Uh, but there is like a platform with selected films uh, which are suitable for a certain age and uh, they, have, they get passwords and they can watch uh, the films uh, in the hospital. They have a screen and they can watch it. And also for the children who don't like read the subtitles yet and the cartoon or, uh, animation is not uh, dubbed or something, we, have, we, like, we uh, record the reading of the subtitles. Uh, so we want to uh, approach them as much as we can. Uh, no urgent questions? Okay, thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. Thank Great you. applause. <laughs> and now, Orlando, please take the stage. Screenings for impaired. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, yeah, well, uh, this is a, a little bit of a misguiding title. Um, while building the presentation, I realized that that is not good enough as a structure for a presentation, so I try to uh, just give a little bit more information about everything that we're doing. Um, so, one minute. Um, 
the cinema is the result of a cooperation between the Museum of Contemporary Art of Antwerp and the studio. Cinema Sat used to, uh, used to be a department of, uh, of the Museum of Contemporary Art, and they were uh, based in another place with a very strong matinee um, and older audience. And suddenly they had to move to the studio a little bit more in the center with a focus on youth and very dynamic house. And um, yeah, so we had to change venues. I was not working for Cinema Sat, but when the cinema started, I also started with the cinema. The main challenge was, uh, yeah, try to, to move that uh, audience that had been uh, already present there. This was a video, but it didn't start. Um, but yeah, we will see. It was a description of the, of the room that we're working in. Um, our program, in a nutshell, is, uh, is, a, seri is, is a collection of uh, classics, um, some of them uh, with, matinee, uh, with a matinee focus for mostly for established audience of uh, 60 plus. Um, and then the rest of the programs is uh, a lot of art house, um, fiction, non-fiction, but also uh, things that fall in between. A lot of organizational partnerships, and th those are th the one with the museum and the one with the studio. Academic partnerships, we work very strongly with the university and the Academy of Fine Arts. Um, and there are lo uh, a lot of other partners that we're working with. And that is uh, key for the rest of the presentation. We um, try to uh, organize things together, with either with one person or with the biggest museums. And uh, for us, it doesn't make a difference. We will it work exa exactly in the same way. And we also try to um, have screenings that at, uh, focus on families and uh, school screenings. Um, the biggest challenge that we had to face was, was moving um, the screenings from, uh, from one place to the other. We lost a lot of people uh, at that time. That was in, uh, in September 2019. And six months later, we had the pandemic, so we had to shut down. So at the moment when we were really starting, we had to shut down. Um, so we had to build up a new audience. We had to uh, reconquer uh, people who, who already lost the, the, um, the costume of going to the, to the movies. And we also had a challenge that was also present today in the discussion with the distributors, uh, to be disruptive or not to be disruptive. We are a funded uh, institution, uh, and yeah, we cannot uh, really affect the market. Uh, that is something that we really have to take care uh, about, because otherwise we can really damage the, the whole ecosystem. Um, next will be... So we had a lot of trial and error. I just lost 15 seconds. Um, okay. Um, uh, we have been changing our programming structure. We have been changing our organizational structures. We have been um, really actually reinventing the whole, the whole thing. We had a, a, a working that, that was really focused on 35 millimeter. And, uh, and then we had to actually we shifted to, to a lot more uh, digital uh, screenings. Our communication has always, is still uh, mostly print and is a lot of information. We have a very packed uh, program of more than 60, sometimes more than 60 films uh, per month. Um, it's like a constant festival. It's really like a, f a constant festival. Um, and a lot of the information is on print, but also on the website. We're also strongly investing on, on social media. The weakness um, that, I don't know, I will try again. No, it's, yeah, no problem. Um, the weakness that we have had um, has been that this has been um, a process where we have not really used tools, uh, or we haven't had the time to use tools at all. Um, one before? Yeah. Um, but that also has, uh, we had we have turned the cons into the pros into the cons into pros, and um, that has actually become a little bit our strength. That we are we have a very organic way of of cooperating uh, with partners, and then we come to the what I think is the essence of uh, of our working. Um, the new initiatives are um, have been following 
that kind of organic way of, of establishing partnerships. We don't start any uh, initiatives, either if it's um, working for impaired or working with um, uh, in in inclusion of, of ethnic groups, um, anything, um, without partners. It really starts from a conversation with someone. And that, is a, that has been an advantage of the, um, of the studio. It's a multidisciplinary place uh, where you can have theater or concerts or a uh, drag performance uh, troupe um, giving a show. And um, that has been very uh, helpful. Uh, when we organize impact screenings, then we have the partners um, that can uh, have like that, that have that work more on the on the social impact. Um, we have also partners that have helped us with the screenings for the for the impaired, and we have um, worked with them in exactly the same way that we're working with other people. So we also have directors who come and and discuss uh, the film for people who are uh, visually impaired, for instance, and they r truly appreciate that the effort that we are doing for any other screening is exactly the same that we're doing for them. And actually directors who, who, who come and speak um, for, for, for this particular audience are also very thankful that they have this opportunity. But also we're working on um, having uh, screenings in the shape of a party or uh, sending the clowns is the, is the drag performance that started with ro the Rocky Horror Picture Show we just invited them to see, hey, do you want to come and, and, and watch the movie? And they said, no, 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 we want to work on the movie. And then they turned the whole, uh, the whole theater into a performance place for, uh, for them. And they are also working right now in Chicago. They really want to do Chicago. And stop making sense. Okay, we are showing it on a, on a screen. Yeah. Um, now we're showing it on a, on a dance floor. Um, next steps, uh, we're working on a clearer way to, um, yeah, so, yeah, uh, on a clearer way to, to structure our way of working because it has been organic um, up to this moment. Um, and there is one thing that was before and that is not here. Our biggest challenge at this moment is really trying to, uh, to build up the trust in, in the things that, that people don't know. Um, people come for the things that, that, they, that they already know, that, that is in, in our nature. But um, we have noticed that things that are um, very top down are exactly as terrible as people, as things that are completely bottom up. So we really have to look for, for a balanced way to make the unknown uh, more attractive to people without being too populistic, which is something that I sometimes have, uh, have felt into. Um, I think that's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Orlando. <laughs> Any questions, comments, maybe ideas for Orlando how to deal with these uh, struggles? Um, do you maybe have an example on how you invite uh, people who don't know what you do to your cinema? You know, you said people like to come to what they know, but what's an example <coughs> of marketing it to the people who don't know that they will like it eventually? Um, w well, that, that at this moment, nothing that is really thought of or everything that you can think of. We have tried uh, distributing papers, inviting uh, together with, uh, I don't know, the bars in the neighborhood, like uh, if, if um, you can invite the people um, to go to the movies and then try to make a combination of drinks and, and movies, or uh, trying to, inv we have invited people in all different ways. We have really noticed that the only way that has been really effective is really having people over the floor and then getting them to know that there is a, so it, it is at the moment that they visit that they really realize, okay, this is a this is a cinema. So we have been uh, renting, we have been uh, doing all kinds of screenings with all kinds of partners, and then we notice that that people come back. So once they come for the first time, then they come back. Um, coming for the first time is really the 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 hard the hard part. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Orlando. Applause, please. And then you.
next up we go to Slovakia. We're going to talk about bringing marginalized groups. So please, Pavel, step forward, please. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, so thank you so much. So I'm here today to talk about a few things what we do in uh, Kino Smell uh, with uh, the marginalized groups and how we get them to come to the cinema what is like the specific program we do for them and how we work not only with them but also with uh, some other organizations to make this whole project work. So our situation was like basically after the pandemic we noticed that a lot of like different communities started to naturally meet in our cinema and so we wanted to uh, really make the place like better for them and make some specialized and curated programming for them. So that's why we decided that it's maybe a good idea to start doing this more inclusive uh, film screenings. Also started to do like film education for uh, young people and uh, children. And so that was the situation. So and our task was to, after the pandemic, also like bring back the audiences to the cinema. But also we felt that after the time there was like a lot of not only like political tension in Slovakia, but also like cultural and uh, in the East. A lot of people are like a bit racist and have like a lot of assumptions about other people who are like not considered like normal, normal. So that's why we as like cultural organization felt the need that we have to make some impact and some change and like take some like responsibility for the things that are happening around us in the city. So, and uh, what was our solution? So maybe this is like the most important part. So you can see all the different like cycles that we started to do after the pandemic on a regular basis. So the first one is like autism friendly, the dementia, blind, deaf, senior. And next week we are bringing back also like baby friendly and somebody mentioned that it's for the parents with the uh, kids so they can come in the morning and uh, watch the movies. Uh, maybe if I can go just a little bit into some of the details of the like technical side and also like financial, because we applied to a few like different projects. So we got some uh, money from that, for example, because uh, in Slovakia, like the distribution doesn't have, for example, the audio commentary for their films and they don't also have like uh, some special subtitles. So we have to outsource it to a different organization and they make, so we just send them the film and the company just makes the audio commentary or the special closed captions which are, which have like each line has a different color when the different character is speaking. And there are also the background noise, noise, noises and films yeah, and, and stuff like that. So you can basically read everything that is happening what you cannot hear. We have also an like induction loop in the in our main screening hall when you have like the uh, yeah when you are uh, you don't hear well so you have this uh, machine and the machine then automatically connects to the induction loop and sends the sound from the movie like right into your ear and uh, three different things that we have to change like on a three different levels to adjust like our cinema to the needs of the marginalized groups were like firstly uh, like the spatial, like the space and we are literally trying to make the space like more accessible to like everybody. We, we, have, we are planning to build also an elevate, elevator like next year, we don't have one yet, there is like a big pair of stairs so that's sometimes a bit challenging but some people dare to come in a wheelchair and we of course help them and bring them up the stairs. Then the programming, so we uh, focus, for example, I can talk about, uh, for example, yeah, for the blind friendly screenings, the programmings and what we also do sunscreen for kids and then the other for the adults. And we find out that the kids really like uh, some musicals and some yeah, fairy tales with a lot of music. So they can, ev even though they cannot see or sometimes like see like very badly, that they can like really enjoy at least like the music and the whole vibe of the film and the last one was the communication adjustments and maybe I can move forward a little bit. 
Uh, yeah, okay, I'll come back to this later. So, uh, la last year, more than 3,200 3, people attended this uh, specialized inclusive uh, screenings. It really helped our cinema to be like, to build up our visibility in the public space. Also like in the, in our uh, city, city context. Then, yeah, the engagement of marginalized group is uh, like very well appreciated all across. And it helped us also to become like more, more tolerant and inclusive and build this like really, really like safe space. Because what we also find out that the, to like maybe the movies themselves are maybe not that important, but building this whole safe space where, where people can meet, it's like so important for them because they don't feel safe a lot in a lot of the public spaces because they are not uh, well, that well adjusted for them. So this feeling that they can come and even when they have some cognitive problems or uh, things like that, yeah, we have the staff that is like trained to be like really nice and they know that they can trust us. We build really this uh, trust through, uh, through the engagement of the civic society because what we find out that uh, in order to really bring these people and to really show that them that they can adjust us and come to us and visit us, we had to uh, yeah, engage with the civil society and the, all of the different clubs that are like that deal and are specialized in uh, dealing with these uh, marginalized groups. And yeah, like through them, the communication also way smoother. So we just told them, yeah, we are doing this and this, and they just, then they, for example, can make them their like special invitations in uh, Slovak sign language, because like we don't know how to do that, but they do. So the cooperation and the communication is really important. Uh, yeah, and what did it work? Yeah, this is maybe also like very interesting. For example, we had like many assumptions about what we thought that these people need, but we were of course wrong because we didn't know exactly like what were they needs. So through communications, through communication, yes, we managed to do that. Like adult programming doesn't work also. We had to make it like really regular. And then introducing the ecosystem practices in our organization was also a bit difficult. And then also like the marketing only through our own channels didn't work. So we had to uh, cooperate with them, yeah. Yes, yes, that's right, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you for your presentation. Um, are there any groups that you're not having a program for that you would like to have a program for? Because it was a very big list. I made a picture of it. Yes. It was a good to-do uh, list for our cinema. Yeah, do you have any idea who else we should focus on? Anybody? Ethnic minorities? Yeah, we sometimes here. do that, but not on a regular basis. Also, people without houses, we sometimes do that, but not on a regular basis. Uh. No, no, no. I was wondering if there are any groups that we that that can be b can be focused on. So I heard people from different ethnic backgrounds. You were saying mentally disabled. I repeat it for the YouTube. Hi. Yeah, but I think yeah we do that. We also like the autism friendly and the dementia friendly, and yeah, the, yeah, 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 the. Oh uh, yeah, so like the autism friendly is like very really like big term, like an umbrella term, and yeah, people like can come to them, and also we also employ some people with Down syndrome, and so we are trying to you know work with them also. Okay, any more questions on this topic? Um, I was curious um, about how you trained the staff. You said the staff got a training to address those particular audiences. Uh, yes, yeah, we also, I maybe forgot to put it in the presentation, but we had like the focused groups with also like our employees and with the people who are really like specialized with uh, working with these people and they give us some tips like what to do, what not to do, what do they need, and how should we like react to some things that they do, like what is like uh, like normal for them, what they do, but we like don't know about it. And yeah, like they really the focus groups and the training of the employees is was was like very beneficial. 
Okay, thank you. There was another question in the back. I just I, I wanted to ask uh, how did you decide like what was the right way to do it for the like you know this uh, huge amount of uh, s groups that every one of them has like special kind of need and special kind of approach to them like did you just you know do it by heart or did you like meet uh, l like one person for example from each of the group and like ask them what their need actually is and how you could uh, meet them halfway somehow. Yeah, we asked so for uh, what they like need, basically. Okay, yeah. and I have also yeah. another, uh, a really quick one. Uh, do <laughs> two really quick <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I can ask him later. I can ask him. Okay, I, I, I wanted to ask uh, financial advice. You are getting money from the state, or uh, no, no, no. We have some f some money from the Icelandic Field Fund and then from oh, the so Liechtenstein Field Fund. Yeah, so the screenings at the beginning were for free, but then we charge like two euro per ticket but it is really not financially sustainable. So okay. if when we run out of the funds, we are really not sure what yeah. is going to happen. I was asking because of the weird political situation in Slovakia right now, if you are gonna feel it or no. That's yeah, it's like a cultural ministry of culture, like withdrawal money from most of the cultural institution in Slovakia. And uh, I was wondering if you are gonna feel the money withdrawal for this particular- For project. this particular, projects we depend more on the international funds so not we get like some money from the government on this um like i'm really not sure i don't want to say something what is which is not true but uh, but yeah but when these projects ends we we are not sure about the the future about it yet but hopefully we will figure something out okay i i seen some i've seen some more fingers questions Okay, uh, I've never heard of a term dementia-friendly cinema. Could you say more what you do to make it friendly? Uh, yes, okay, so the screenings are uh, always in the morning when like we were told that these people are like the most aware and most fresh in the morning. So we make them usually at 10 o'clock. Then uh, the films that we show them are usually like really calm maybe with some uh, like sentimental value so we show them like older films that they maybe can like remember and connect with them they also have a break in the middle of the screening so they can use uh, some refreshments also the lights are not completely out they are a bit dimmed the volume is so lower and then all the mirrors from the space are gone or covered like no mirrors anywhere so they are, do not feel somehow because yeah, we were told that it is good for them if we, they don't see mirrors. Mirrors, so mirrors. Oh, okay. yeah, mirrors. So they don't never see heard themselves. Yes. Okay. Short one. A very short one. And a short answer. It's not a question. I just want to congratulate you on the tenderness and delicacy with which you present the topic. It it touches me. The the way you uh, approach it. I think it's uh, brilliant. So that that's it. Thank you. You can take it home to Slovakia. <laughs> Put it in your pockets. Okay, everybody. It's a very important moment because we're heading for the last presentation of this Sofia <laughs> Innovation Lab. So a moment of silence <laughs> and please, can we have the floor for nobody else than Thomas Stenmark from Sundby Berge in Sweden? That was good. Hi. Um, yeah. So, um, yes, Bio Bristol in Sundby Berge, as we say in Sweden. Um, we are a community cinema in the suburb north of Stockholm. So we have nothing to do with Bristol. It's just uh, the name of the... <laughs> That's just a neon light there, okay? <laughs> and uh, it's a community cinema. It's traditionally it's populated by the working class people in our area. And our aim is to be a social and uh, open social and free space for the community. So this is the situation, right? We, uh, and each semester... Okay. Okay. No, that's it. Uh -huh. Whoa, and one more. Yeah, 
Oh, okay. Well, that was all of it. So I have to, do, I have to redo it. <laughs> Seven <laughs> minutes. Got uh, okay. You see, I'm a boomer, you know. Okay, now that was too much. One more. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay, it's going fast. I did it again. So can someone can help me? Could uh, the second one. So yeah, thank you, Alexander, for uh, for saving me. You see, it's the last slide, and it's like yes, it is the last one. So yes, uh, I didn't <laughs> do it wrong. So each semester, we try to uh, work with a community, uh, make a film cycle together with an organization or film community. That's either a non-profit organization, that's either a um, NGO or a collective. So in the case study that I will present, it's gonna it's the uh, collective called. Um, Jordens for them in Swedish, and it's called um, the rest of the earth. Or le damnier dans la How many have read Franz Fanon in this room? <laughs> okay, so you now I know my crowd. It's about anti-colonialism. Um, yes, so that's the situation. How to deal with the tasks? So um, for this uh, particular cycle, they contacted us in January. 2023, right? Yeah, yeah, January 2023. So we are a small organization, Crappy and is answering an email. We don't have too much time. So we have the short list of the films in June, July 2023. So I just give you the timeline. <laughs> and our first screening was on 16th of November. Okay? So you see the timeline. And um, what did we show? Well, we show the uh, La, Bat La pa Bataille de Algeria, the Battle of Algeria, 1966, a European treasure. It's uh, completely classic with uh, about the, um, in, uh, it takes place in Algeria and it's under French occupation. So the, uh, the action, uh, the task there was then to find the film right. And the other task that we had was to make the promotion for this. How do you package this, or how to say? So, we printed a flyer, classical cinema <laughs> stuff. <laughs> ah, right? Uh, old fashioned. And we took an image of the flyer and put it on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, everything except the flyer was on Instagram. Instagram reels, Instagram uh, posts with a film screening. And it was all made by this collective. We didn't do anything. We made them do all the promotion material. We just gave our logo and we gave them free access to do whatever they wanted. Uh, of course, we checked it and said, yeah, the information is correct and everything. But we didn't care about the design at all. Um, yeah, We're moving in. I think I'm... So again, finding the audience. 16th of November, I said the timeline. You know what happened in, everyone knows what happened in the world in October. I guess I don't have to tell this to anyone. Um, so that helped a lot. Uh, helped or, you know. It means that we were decided that uh, all this, the, the uh, fun, we decided to make a fundraising. So this screening, when we covered the film rights and we covered the staff, we uh, were sending money to Gaza. And what I forgot, because I'm so <laughs> extremely nervous, <laughs> was that uh, we provide the venue for free. And providing a venue for free in Stockholm is not so easy. People are struggling to get free spaces. And um, we take care of the film rights, we provide the, the venue, and they bring in the people. So, yes, and uh, Daniel was talking about local uh, products. So we were selling Palestinian olive oil, which is not a local product, but it also attracted people into the, to the cinema. All right, so now we're coming to the results. Finally, you're in the last panel. I know you're <laughs> we're in the end now, <laughs> so <laughs> don't worry. Um, yes, this program was the first thing they did outside Instagram, this, uh, this uh, collective. So they have never been able to... Um, apply for money for funds or anything, but by 
but we were providing them a venue. We were strengthening the community. So they actually got funds from the Art Council, bringing the directors from Canada and US to Sundbyberg, a small suburb in Stockholm. And this is one of the results, that we are actually bridging communities. People are coming from abroad to Sundbyberg, and we're helping our society to grow. So it's uh, one of the, like, the nicest results for us. And if you check this for the cinema, then, what, what do we get out of it? Of course, we get visibility. And I'm apologizing for the crappy image. It's half empty here because I uh, had to run with the microphone and everything. I had no time to take <laughs> any pictures from that actual event. But you see the cinema. So now I we don't have to ask uh, organizations. Like, we don't have to find organizations so much. They are coming to us. The, after this uh, event, people in our community is now coming to us and asking, oh, could we also do something in your venue? Could we also make a film cycle in, in Bristol? And uh, yes, of course, we're going to try to strengthen our community. Um, so, the, and the, well, it's a local focus. <laughs> Thank, well, then I have to say hello. I have to say hello to Ilona. Thank you for supporting me because <laughs> I was there. <laughs> so cool. Thank you. The last presentation, everybody. So it's the last Q&A. Any questions? Yep. Now, thank you, Thomas. Uh, uh, I didn't quite get it. Uh, is it so that um, this uh, uh, uh they had their own? But how 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 do Good. how do the the audience then find the next group that comes to you? Um, or the next or how does it? No, no, no. Uh, I mean, um, uh, now you had uh, this group and oh they, yes. they came. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, uh, if there are other groups who want to collaborate with you, yeah. uh, uh, and they make their own, uh, they uh, their own program, but also their own Instagram. Uh, uh I, forg I, yeah, I forgot to say that because I would say that the. Um, of Colon of Mira, <coughs> their Instagram account, they don't have so many followers, actually. They don't have so many followers, and but they're engaging. You know, there are maybe 1,000 followers, but 300 comments. So even if a small <laughs> engaging community, it gets a lot of spread in social media. So, and partly answering to that question, we have, a, for instance, a Cat Catalonian organization in, in Sundbyberg. In our small suburb, there's a, like a Cat Catalonian Federation. They also want to have a screenings. And it's not because this was political. It was like they, they see that the, the cinema is actually existing in our, in our, in our suburb. Providing. Yes, I'm providing, yes. Um, so was that the answer for the question? Or not really, not really. <laughs> Would you like to rephrase it then? Yeah. Uh, no, no, I, I just mean uh, uh, this Av Colonisera Mera, uh, they had their own Instagram. Uh, yes. So, but but uh, how how does the you don't connect it to your cinema? Oh, uh, repost definitely. We uh, repost it just a lot. Yeah. Just repost. Yeah, repost and then cross promotion. True. True. Any more questions? Um, I think I have a, a, a general question, so it could be afterwards also. Okay. Um, how how recognizable is this situation for? the other um, uh, present, uh, cinemas present? The, yeah, this kind, of, this kind of partnership, this kind of cooperation, this kind of uh, way of working, um, receiving a list and, and either, either renting it, uh, either um, making the room available for free uh, in any way. Maybe we can do it with hands. So you want to know how many people are, uh, how many cinemas are renting their place for commercial purposes, for example. So that's about uh, two thirds, eighty percent, I guess. And how many cinemas are collaborating with local social parties or social groups? No, no, so sorry, no, 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 no. Okay, I'm not talking about but NGOs or local entities, uh, social entities. I was saying the right, uh, the wrong word. Okay. Is it safe, the question now? Good. 
Who, wo who works with political parties? <laughs> yeah, but, but is it then a political thing or is it then a commercial thing? Because, yeah. 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 Um, you want to know some more? A lot of the things that we organize together with partners are also co-curated. Um, sometimes we receive a list and then we start looking for the right uh, and, and whatever we find first is, is the one that makes it. Um, but this, this is something that uh, we do like twice a week, th th this kind of, of, uh, of partnerships. And thi this is actually the, the essence of, um, of the structure of our program. As we are a private cinema, we have to earn money to exist, to pay our uh, staff and so on, and to do uh, other events. But I remember when we were uh, planning to do um, a screening of silent Ukrainian film. Uh, it's in English, it, it's uh, the bread. It's not well known, nobody knows it, uh, actually. <laughs> and uh, with live music. Um, and I, f uh, I was in touch with, um, with a colleague from Dovrenko Center. And for a couple of weeks, it's about an invasion of Ukraine, of course. A couple of weeks, I couldn't reach him. I really want to do another screening. And after some time, he texted me that he's very sorry for the delay, but right now he's in, arm in an army and he's gonna be there and fight. And uh, if there's anything we can do, uh, give any idea on wh whatsoever, uh, please do. So we all decide that all income from the screening, w both with musicians, uh, will come to Dovrenko Center because they really, really need to have an gen energy generator to keep uh, the work in archive all going. And since our festival is, uh, Silent Film Festival, is the thing that uh, I put, and each of us put a lot of heart and passion, we do really need to have those uh, places like Dovrenko Center work. And they provide and they take care and the reconstructions of the films. And uh, we also put this uh, film we record the music with the musicians and they give the music, gave the music for free. We put it online on our TVO platform and in, we inform people of anyway, digital, not digital, radio, television, what we can reach, that if they watch the movie on our website, the whole income will come to Dovrenko Center. I wouldn't say that the money was great, but whatever it is, we just transfer it and uh, yeah, we, we're just waiting as they will be back to the office and work again with them. And they were really, really grateful. So we are trying to be somehow involved in this kind of, we also set up a kindergarten in the palace. So it was very nice. And also our cinema did a free screening for kids, cartoon, uh, cartoon screenings uh, without dubbing, without any dialogues. And the Ukrainian kids were coming and they were really, really appreciate to have, uh, you know, um, part of the normal life implemented in the new realities. Yeah. Thank you for uh, this addition. Uh, that raises also another question. Which cinema has done fundraising? So like yeah, all I said, so free screenings and then the entire box office will go to a good cause? Yeah, so we're... Uh, uh, it's good to hear that uh, so many people, uh, so many cinemas do that for sometimes, once in a while. One question. I just had a question for Thomas because um, I think um, the whole uh, Gaza, um, Israel is, is quite a polarizing topic. I don't know how it is with you, but I think for the Netherlands um, it's quite polarizing, but you took quite a strong stance by giving the money to Gaza. Um, did you get re responses to that as well, or maybe from Jewish communities, or did you notice any other comments on that? Uh, yes, of course. No, it is. It is on. Yeah, this is on. Uh, should I stand? Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, y yes, uh, I stand for the question also. <laughs> but it was. It is controversial, uh, and that's why um, our team are very conf confident because we are totally independent. We don't have any financing uh, that could be withdrawn if we show the wrong film. 
so we can be brave in that sense. But we still have to make money. We still have to survive. So it could be a backlash. We Yes, our customer service got emails saying that this was inappropriate. Um, and we replied them in the kindest way that we could. Uh, but it was a fi film cycle about anti-colonialism. And they were the actually designing the program. So we could also stand behind that because it was a film cycle that we actually planned in January 2023. So it was ha we could also had the argument, we had arguments to be so brave to actually proceed with this. Okay, one last question and then we're going to wrap up this session. I, it, w it wasn't a question, rather I, w I wanted to yeah, uh, build on what you were saying because we also had um, an NGO who did... Um, W it was planned uh, again ahead. We um, ga gave out the room um, for uh, an NGO that did Palestinian um, female directors. Um, and um, um, one of my colleagues kind of suggested that um, we emphasize the fact that it's not the cinema's position, but rather, you know, this NGO's position so that um, there's no backlash. And I just wanted to say, because we're a public institution, I mean, not, not the cinema, but it's under the umbrella of a public institution, and um, um, there was thankfully no no backlash. I mean, I said I don't want to do that because it, it is our position. I, we stand by the screening, so I don't want to say it's not our position, but at the same time, there was no backlash. It was super okay. No, I mean, there were people who didn't appreciate it, but it, it was all very civilized. Last, last year, Agnieszka Holland did a movie, The Green uh, Border. You might remember that. So ahead, away, before it was released in Poland, we were already informed that there would be some protests in front of our cinema, and we were there uh, on a Pol Polish film festival back in uh, Gdynia, so the other part of the country. And we were a little bit stressed about it because we received some letters, and the whole like television from all over the Poland wanted a comment. And we started to be a, uh, a topic in the news and the cultural sector on the portals and so on and so on. Like the social media went crazy and actually people were fighting f uh, against each other. <laughs> we, didn't, we, d we had no comment on that. We, have, we wanted to screen the movie of Agnieszka Holland, which is a great director. She has a movie that touches contemporary field, but still a movie. And also... <laughs> This might be, I mean, say it after of the record uh, regarding some uh, one uh, note, but uh, it made um, its work for the, the opposition, uh, for those who are against of screening this movie in Polish cinema and abroad. Uh, this ends up um, the other way around. So they did the whole marketing for the movie. And you know, the numbers were like awesome. People were coming over to see the movie because they didn't know what it's all about. And it ended up with a huge box office. Good, bad press. <laughs> the uh, bad press, good press, it's always a press. Yeah. <laughs> and at this moment, Ola keeps going, and it's not for the YouTube eyes. It's interesting what you're saying, Ola, thank you. But now it's not on YouTube, so that's good. No, no. Oh, I thought you said something that could not be on the YouTube. Yeah, yeah if you want to. Okay. Okay. Okay, everybody. And here is a microphone for you. Um, our last two minutes online of this Sofia Innovation Lab. So. I'd like to take this opportunity, together with Ola, to thank some people that have been sitting all the time in the back, but doing really hard work. We were here in the spotlight, shining and having fun and <laughs> making jokes. Yes. But and the real work is always done in the back, like yes. we all know in Hidden the cinema. Out there. So I would like to have a big round of applause for Bianca. Yay! For Bobby, doing the technique. Woo! It's you! For Zulea, for all the social networking. And, and blog. And of course, the one and only, our hope in desperate times, our translator, the head of technique. 
uh, tour guide. Tour guide. Cousin guide. And a very kind guy, yeah. Alexander. Woo! And Nadia, of course, for uh, giving us more details on collaborative innovate program. You know, uh, except <laughs> you're gonna, we're gonna fill your box, email box. You know, with propositions and uh, projects soon. So be aware. And of course, the one and only, Ola. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and Tom. And then, of course. The most important people here, we're gonna give you a round of applause. You guys, woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you. And look back on the clock for the time management. <gasps> we are so, so ahead of time. Two, Two one. one.